Hi, this is Goich. Welcome to the doorway to the world. Today, I want to show you the way to the holiness, the special. Well, the holiness is a word often comes up in Christian life. It's very important. Well, people tell you very important and God tells you it's important. So it must be it's important. Well, the thing is, proper understanding about the word holiness is the most important thing. And I believe that a lot of people, many Christians, misunderstand the word holiness. That's why when people hear someone say, that, I'm going to talk about holiness, said, oh no, you're going to talk about holiness? Well, it's so heavy, so proper. Oh, I don't think I can hear this. But if you're thinking about this, if you feel that way, this word for you, this session for you, I'm going to set you free from the fear and the struggle. They often, the holiness, uh, scripture people come up with is the 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. It says, Just as he who calls you holy, in all things you do, be holy, because it is written, Be holy, as I am holy. This scripture, when people hear this, especially the young Christians, you feel, oh no, I have to be holy. I have to be holy because it's God's command. And when you stumble and fall and do something wrong, to make a mistake, you feel, oh no, I missed it. I cannot become holy. I must be holy, but I messed it up. And then you feel condemnation, guilt, and shame. And then as soon as you feel guilt and shame, feel guilt and shame, you start thinking, oh no, in Christ, it says in the Bible, no guilt and shame. So how am I feeling this? Oh, because I'm not holy. I have to be holy. So you start striving again, struggle again, and you feel guilty again, this downward spiral of depression. You see, you're not the only one. I felt like that before, until I realized what the holy means and what the God is saying in this passage. Well, quite often the people think the holiness means sinlessness, the righteousness, the clean life. And that actually is sending people into such a guilt and shame, guilty trip. And uh, I tell you, you start wondering why God given us such a hard word. Well, I tell you something, every word God gives you is for good, to encourage you, to build you up, build you up in a righteousness, build you up in your faith, and build you up in relationship with God. If any word that the, takes you away, any word that takes you away from God and making you feel guilty, and probably you have to rethink about the word. So, why God telling us, be holy as I am holy? Well, if the holiness is about sinlessness, you have to stop and think now. Well, when I became a Christian, I was told Jesus took all my sins away, made me righteous, clothed in his righteousness. So, why is God still telling me, be holy? Well, valid question, isn't it? Did God get it wrong or contradict himself? Unthinkable. Well, so in that case, maybe our understanding of holiness isn't quite right or quite clear. So, question is, what is holy? Best thing is, the best place to start with, let's have a look at the original language that the Bible was written, which is Greek and Hebrew. And the interesting thing is that both Greek and Hebrew, the word holy or holiness, it tells us exactly the same thing. And this is a definition gives us. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, holy means to set, up, set apart something or someone from common or ordinary as a special. Set apart for the sacred use, the set apart as special. Wait a minute. I can't find anything about sin 
or sinlessness, righteousness, or cleanness, where is it gone? Well, now you, we find out the holiness isn't about sinlessness. The holiness is about being set apart. So this is the definition of holiness. The holy means to set apart from ordinary and common as a special for godly use, for godly purpose. So, it makes sense, doesn't it? When God said, holy, the, used the word holy in Genesis 1, when God made all things in six days, and at, on seventh day, God rested. And he said, on the seventh day is holy. Sabbath day, set apart, it is special. God is saying the seventh day is, is not like at the six days of the week. This is a special day set apart, especially for me. You see, when the Moses uh, met the God at the burning bush, God told Moses, take off your shoes. This is the holy ground. The God is saying this part of the land, piece, piece of land is special because I'm here. When uh, God is telling Israelites how to build the uh, how to build the tabernacle and temple, God told, instructed them that the things you use, the utensils that, that they use in the temple are holy. They are set apart from ordinary day's use. So if there's a spoon in the temple, it's a holy spoon. Do not use that holy spoon to eat your porridge in the morning because it's special. You see, it's set apart. And also God said to the Israelites, God, God said, Israelites, you are my holy people. It means you are specially set apart for me. Well, you can read it in the Old Testament. Israelites wasn't sinless. He committed many sins and saddened God. You see, but God still called them holy people. If its holiness is about sinlessness, then they cannot be called holy people. So holy means set apart as special. So next question is, how do we become holy? How do we get set apart? Well, I tell you something, we don't do it. Good news is Jesus has done all for us. He is the one set us apart. You see, when you become a Christian, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, when you give your life to the Lord, when you believe in Him, He saved you. He takes away all the sins away, and He made you into new creation. The Bible tells us, in Christ Jesus, we are all new creation. Uh, we, are, we become citizens of the kingdom of God. We are taken apart, taken away from the common world, the ordinary world, the outside the world, into the kingdom of God. In other words, we were made special when we give our life to the Lord. And this is the great news. The Bible tells us it's all done by the grace of God through Jesus Christ. It's not done by work or our effort, or our merit or our birth. It's all done by the grace of God. In other words, when we become Christian, we are made righteous, we are made sinless, we are made holy, set apart by Christ Jesus. So, next question is, why God keep telling us, be holy as I am holy, if we are already made holy? Well, this is what I believe, what God's telling us. In everything, we have to recognize and realize we are the people God handpicked and set us apart into his kingdom. We are the people of kingdom of God. We are the co heir with the Christ. We are the children of God in, blood of, uh, in, in Christ Jesus through his blood. Have that recognition and realization in you. And God's telling us now you are living with a standard, according to the standard and value of the kingdom of God. So in everything you do, or everything we do, 
we have to consider and align with the God's standard and God's value, not the worldly value. That's why the Bible tells us, like in the book of Romans tells us, do not be conformed into the worldly way. Change your way you think and act. You see? And keep yourself on the path. Recognize yourself as a specially chosen people that's faith in Christ. See, change our thought and change our way of thinking and acting. That's our repentance. And keep ourselves on that righteous path. And staying on the righteous path is very important as well. So that's why God's saying, be holy as I am holy. God is saying, I am God who is so special. There's no one like me, no one above me, and no one less, uh, no one greater than me. I'm special. Now, in Christ Jesus, you are part of my special people. Please act like that. You see, being holy means we choose not to defile ourselves. We choose not to walk in a worldly way. Not uh, choose not to be surrendered to the peer pressure of the world. But we decide to stand according to God's values and God's standard because we know and recognize and realize we are specially chosen people. You see, God's saying, you are my special ones. I have handpicked you for my great purpose and in great love that I have for you, and which is not harm you, but for good, the purpose to prosper you, and the purpose to give you the great future and blessing in your life, and gives you joy and peace. That's why God's telling us, be holy. No, you are set apart, you are special. So, being, spe uh, being holy, we choose to remain in the hands of God, knowing we are saved by His grace and stand in faith as a chosen people. I want to tell you this, the holiness is not the product of sinlessness, but sinlessness is a fruit of holiness. So you cannot make yourself holy by trying not to sin, trying to do the right things. But realizing, recognizing you are holy people in Christ Jesus, you can become sinless. You might stumble and fall, you might make a mistake, but in you, you know, you can stand up, ask for grace of God to make yourself better grow in maturity and walk as a holy people so be holy as he is holy see you next time god bless